Welcome to Bigfoot Adventures. Have you ever had a Bigfoot sighting? If you have and you don't want to let anybody know that it was you that saw them or you're afraid to tell your story because you're afraid of you being made fun of, I'd be glad to tell your story for you. All you have to do is email me your story at bigfootadventures411 at gmail.com. Let me know what you want me to say, what you don't want me to say. And I can put your story out there so other people can hear about it without you being identified. Hey everyone, this is Jeff. I just met him on an outing. And he has an amazing Bigfoot story to tell you from his childhood. So go ahead, Jeff. Tell us all about it. Well, this was back in the early 70s in Louisiana, Missouri, home of Momo. And this actually happens the two years prior to being the Momo craze taking off. A friend of mine and I used to go to a clearing near Star Hill to play pitch and catch because I wasn't very athletic as a kid and really didn't catch good. So we'd go down to these woods to play pitch and catch and try to get me better so I could play in the Little League team with the rest of the guys. So we were down there and a lot of times we'd miss a ball and he'd roll into the woods and have to go chase it down and then one day we're out there playing and I miss the ball and it rolls into the woods and it comes flying back out. Oh own. wow. So you know, we figured there was some teenager in there didn't want to be bothered so we didn't go in and look. But the next few times we played it kept happening and then one day this little hairy kid about our size stands up and throws the ball out well, we had no idea what to do but after it did it it ran off into the woods I've seen another one run with it so but we'd go back and kept on doing what we were doing and eventually they'd come out of the woods and start throwing the you know they'd catch the ball and throw the ball and come back out of the woods and got to where we'd pitch and catch with them you know we'd throw it to them and they'd catch it and throw it back they threw a lot harder than we did <laughs> but there was always a bigger one you could see him out in the woods hiding he didn't want to be seen and like I said this was a couple of years before Momo was. I've heard of Momo. Uh huh. Well, Star Hill is across the road from where we were, and that's where the family that seen Momo lived. But we were on the other side of the road on uh, a different hill. I can't remember the name of it right next to the cem across, across the gully from the cemetery. But uh, there were the two little ones and then the bigger one who was probably six foot, six, maybe seven foot. And then there were these two great big ones I think were the parents. One, uh, it was a couple and they lived in the woods uh, we lived on Hilltop Drive and they lived in the woods on the other side of the hill behind us wow now how long did you see these I mean how many years did this go on this went on for two years but we didn't see them year round they weren't there in that area all the time oh they were usually only there in the Late summer, early fall is oh. when we'd see them the most. So they probably move around according to the weather. Yeah, I, the weather and what's available in the area. Yeah. And I know there's on the north side of the hill where we, we lived on the south slope. And I know that on the north slope there are uh, uh, old uh, rock shelters that natives used oh on the interesting north side of the hill 
I, I think they came there in the summer because there's berry patches down along the Salt River and the Mississippi River that they could get to easy. I think they wintered further up the Salt River in the rock shelters on the south facing slopes. That's so interesting. I don't know that because yeah, yeah, I was eight, eight to ten years old and this was all going on. And Well, I really appreciate you sharing your story. That's we awesome. We moved away, uh, I think it was 70, 73 or 74. And the fall after we moved away was when Bigfoot was sighted, or when uh, Momo was sighted by the peeping, as a, being a peeping Tom. Which oh, wow. I think it was the teenage, teenage one, not the adults. Yeah. Because they, we, we very rarely seen them unless they were out to get the kids to take them home. Yeah. Which That's is, very interesting. Yeah, well, this, like I said, this was early to mid '70s. Things were different then. Yeah, I mean, when the streetlights came on, we headed for home. Yeah. We didn't have phones. We carried around with us, so we don't have pictures. We didn't have cameras. We carried around with us. Yeah. And it was. And at your age, you probably didn't even think about taking a picture. No. No, we didn't, really. Uh, and we didn't say anything about them because, well, you know, they were different and we knew how people who were different were treated, so. Yeah. We didn't say anything about them and, uh, because we were, <laughs> didn't want them to be treated like we were treated somewhat. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you for sharing your story. Oh, you're welcome. All right. After I got done interviewing Jeff, he told me that there was another day in those two years where they were having interactions that uh, the two little kid Bigfoots, the juveniles, came out and were playing with ball with them again. And all of a sudden, later in the day, they heard the mother scream he said it was so loud it just scared him to death. So him and his friend went running, and the two juvenile Bigfoots went running into the woods towards the scream. Well, he didn't know why they screamed or anything, but the next day they were back out there again playing ball, and the two little Bigfoots came out of the woods and started playing with them again, and then they waved him over to the woods. So him and his friend reluctantly walked towards the woods, and about a hundred yards inside the woods, there was three dead coyotes. So he doesn't know if the mom was screaming because those coyotes were coming for him, and she was trying to warn them or what, but that's what he thinks. So I thought that was very, very interesting that that happened. But he said it was about a hundred um, yards off the trail, you know, off the side of the woods where these three dead coyotes were. It's a very interesting story. I appreciate you all watching, subscribing, liking my channel. Um, it really helps my channel. Um, so please subscribe. It's free. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.